G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Tuesday morning here in Australia, so obviously sort of, you know, Monday evening over in the States and the market is down. So a lot of people were expecting that, you know, Monday some exuberance, exuberance was going to come back in and particularly when we look at the charts that, you know, there was going to be this big massive move and breakout out of that wedge that we've been in. Now there definitely has been a, I guess a breakout, I wouldn't exactly call it a breakout, but the wedge has been invalidated. But it just hasn't been a big move uh, either way. Now it is obviously to the downside because we're down 4.7%. But for me, again, it's pretty much what I expected. I think there's going to be a lot of sideways movement uh, and a lot more shakeout. And look, maybe even another low. That is definitely possible before we continue up. But again, we'll have a look at the, uh, the charts very, very soon and we'll go into that. So as we can see, Bitcoin dominance dropped a little bit. ETH dominance is actually up a little bit and gas still sitting around 20 but basically we can see it's almost just a sea of red. It doesn't look like there's almost anything green at the moment in the 24 hours. Seven days still a little bit, but 24 hours not so much. So all right, let's have a look. Has anything done well in the last 24 hours in the top 100? All right, Arweave has done all right. Theta Fuel, so that's it, two coins. Then we get into the stable coins and it's all just losses after that. So, you know, congratulations to anyone who's got Theta Fuel uh, and Arweave. Outside of that in the top 100, it looks like we're all going into losses. All right, so again, we know the market's down 4.7%. What's been knocked around the most? What's really been yeah, hit the hardest in the last 24 hours? All right, Thorchain. Waves, Internet Computer, again, these are all kind of 15%, uh, you know, losses, and they kind of hurt a little bit, as I always say. 15% and above, either whether it's to the upside or the downside, they're, you know, kind of reasonable gains or reasonable losses. So these are around there. And then it's just lots of double-digit sort of losses. I mean, some things are still up over seven days, but most things, most things are kind of getting hammered at the moment. And again, it's it's hard to be in cryptocurrencies at times like this. It really, really is. And I understand that. But for me, I'm an investor. I'm not thinking short term. So look, even if we are in a bear market and we're going to go through another year of downside, I'm just going to ex accept that. I'm going to continue to dollar cost average in. Now, not into uh, you know the smaller altcoins and things if we're in a bear market. Uh, you know, I may sell some of those off, but if I'm already at a loss, then I may as well just sort of hold. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm at a gain for still a lot of them, but I'll really just focus on a Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, like I said, maybe Polygon uh, and possibly Cardano as well. But really, just Bitcoin, that's what I'll focus on most. If we truly are in a bear market, that's my sort of strategy. What you decide to do is really, you know, up to you. You have to work it out. I don't think we're in a bear market. I think we are seeing a bearish trend and I think it's going to play out very similar to the 2014-2013 kind of bull run. They had two cycle peaks. And again, we'll get onto that and have a look. So look, yeah, market's down. It hurts. It's hard to invest at times like this. I understand that. But this really is, uh, you know, when the fortunes are made. It's when people can continue to invest even when it's going down because once it starts to go back up, they've built such a good base. And yes, you can say, you know, just put the money aside and wait until the bottom hits and then put it all in. If it was that easy, that's what everyone would do. No one knows when the bottom is truly in. So for me, just DCA, dollar cost average. That's my personal opinion, not financial advice. You've got to do what's right by you. And, you know, that's the only thing that matters in the end. But look, if what you normally do isn't working for you, then you might have to try doing something different. That's just the only thing I would say is consider that. I used to do, you know, the, the same thing and I would never put money into markets that were going down. I'd only put money into them once they're going up. And the thing is, you're not really, unless you're actively in the market on a daily basis, you don't know when they've been going up until they've already gone up a whole lot. And everyone's talking about it and you've missed all of those good gains. So yeah, for me, DCA, easiest way, been doing it for a while now. Uh, and it definitely works. But again, let's move on to the charts and have a look. 
All right, so we can see up here, we did break to the downside and now we've actually broken out of this upwards channel. And we'll have a look at this shortly. Look, there was no volume there. People were hoping that there was gonna be volume come sort of, you know, Monday morning uh, and the price would really spike. That, ha that hasn't happened, all right? So we can get rid of the volume. Don't need that for now. Now we can have a look at this and, you know, this still looks kind of bearish, unfortunately. Now, it doesn't mean we're in a bear market. It's just looking bearish at the moment. So obviously the price is coming down. This is setting and it's been setting these for a while on the RSI, lower highs, the highs continue to get lower. And look, we've even got a lower high over here, but also we have some, uh, you know, kind of bullish divergence down here on the RSI as well, but it has been invalidated a little bit but look, this now, we just pull over here, this is still a higher low. So really, it does feel like it's coming to a point. And then we can see down here, it looks like there's possibly going to be another crossover again. And that could be bearish. Again, red, you know, when the blue dips under the orange, that's bearish. And when the blue breaks over the orange, that's bullish. And so we've had bullish down here, but it doesn't mean it can't be another fake out and we come down lower. So anyway, for now, let's get rid of some of these I want to just focus on the normal chart All right so we've broken out of this trend that we've been in for quite some time so this was that upwards channel and again we started it way back here from when the pandemic pandemic happens now when Bitcoin breaks to the downside of this we are either going into a bearish trend or a bear market traditionally that's what it's done and so we can see we've broken out to the downside but look it's one daily candle at the moment and it's not the end of the world this just means this upward trend has been broken it doesn't necessarily mean a bear market and I'll show you what I mean by that all right again as we can see this broke to the upside but then all of a sudden this broke to the downside. If you put another one in there, it would have broke to the downside and that means a bearish trend. Now that was part of a sort of, you know, this was truly the bear market and then everything after this was bull market, bearish trend and anomaly, bull market. Again, really the bull market kind of started here. That was the low it's in. We've been in a bull market since the 15th of December, 2018 but you can have bearish trends within it. So again, we can see over here, we can see there was a daily candle close here below, still bull market. Daily candle close, still bull market. Daily candle close, still a bull market. So just because you break to the low side doesn't mean it's a bear market. But again, I'm waiting for this uh, to show. So again, what we can see is when you break to the upside though, there's usually bearish sentiment. Breaks to the upside, bearish sentiment again just broke to the upside bearish sentiment but it doesn't mean the bull market's over but what I really want to focus on is here this one so again we had it just went parabolic this is way back in 2013 2014 but again broke to the upside which we recently did bearish sentiment still bull market just bearish sentiment broke to the upside huge dip but really again it was bearish in a bull market for a long time not a bear market just bearish inside a bigger bull market but here's what I want to show you so this one again it broke to the upside and then it was bang this massive drop exactly this repeated this is basically what happened this repeated again so again and then you know, because you could have followed this up there, it would have been the same and it's broke to the downside. Now again, that's bearish, but it's not a bear market. This was just a bearish trend within a bull market that started back here on uh, November 2011 and went all the way through to the 4th of December 2013. So what I see happening right here is we've simply broke to the upside and we're going to break to the downside. Uh, again, this could have, you know, you could have, followed through here almost uh, exactly, not quite thereabouts, but it's broke to the upside and then it's going to break down to the downside and then continue on with the bull run. That is what I think is gonna happen. So again, I'll pull it back over here and show you what I mean. 
So we've broke to the upside. Got quite exuberant there for a while, and now it's broken to the downside. And it's not broken like all that much, but what I think could happen now is that, bring this in, it's entirely possible that we're gonna have some more shake out, come down and test these levels and just travel sideways outside of this for a while before the market builds up enough steam again to start moving upwards. That is what I think could happen. I don't know if it is what's going to happen, but what I can tell you is if we do break down below this kind of $27,000 level, then I would say, yes, we're definitely in a bear market. Now, not just a wick and not maybe even just one candle close that comes below it, but if we have multiple candle closes below it that keep getting lower, then absolutely. But really, I think this is kind of going to be the line thereabouts. Uh, if we get down to here, I think that will probably be the shake out, if not even before then, before we continue uh, in an uptrend. But look, that's only a guess, it's not financial advice. Now, I can show you a story that might have some uh, something to do with this, but again, some of the stories we're gonna look at are both bullish uh, and somewhat bearish. So again, you'll have to make your own mind up. But number one, two-fifths of Australians' millennials prefer crypto investment over real estate. This is the future. This is what is coming. I'm not saying, you know, millennials won't invest in property. They will, but they already are thinking outside of the box of, you know, what the old generation have done. Two-fifths, you know, that's not too far off. Half of all millennials would rather buy crypto than property because they see the overall return is just so much more. This is likely going to continue to grow and this will affect house prices. Uh, and again, this is Australia. Could Australia be an anomaly from the rest of the world? Yeah, could be, but I don't think so. I think if you went around the world, you would find a lot of them are leaning towards this. And because they're young and you know all the rest of it, they're not too worried about the dips. They go, yep, I understand that it's gonna drop, you know, 90% maybe uh, in some years, but then in those other years, it's going to go up by hundreds of percent. So this is why I'm so bullish on crypto. The younger generation are getting more and more crypto positive. Like They're just growing up with it. That's It's a thing that they know. Whereas when I was young, no one knew what crypto was. Crypto didn't start until 2009. And for its first, you know, even up until now, it's just been a highly speculative market and all this fight about, oh, it's not real money and it's fake and it's going to be banned and it's going to be this. That is not the case. You know, fads don't last 12 years. Fads are lucky if they last a year or two and then they just disappear. Bitcoin's still here. Ethereum's still here. These aren't fads. And this is why I'm so bullish on crypto and why I continue to invest because the younger generation are leading towards that and it is going to continue to grow, in my personal opinion. Again, you'll have to work out for yourself. All right, micro strategy. Stock slides after announcing a new $400 million, de a new $400 million debt to raise, uh, raise to buy Bitcoin. So micro strategy, still buying. And again, I think he's gonna go down to one of the smartest investors uh, you know, in our kind of lifetime, but that doesn't mean he's not going to see that large volatility and he knows. So he's out buying more Bitcoin. Uh, you know, again, you're gonna have to make your own decision and you know, time is the greatest storyteller, but unfortunately you have to wait for it to happen before you know uh, the outcome of it. That's always, you know, the way you're not gonna know the outcome before it actually happens. But I think he'll go down as one of the smartest investors uh, in a long time. Now, more stories. So San Jose Sharks are the latest team to accept Dogecoin and Bitcoin. Again, the space is growing, but it's just some bearish sentiment at the moment. People are still worried and nervous and, you know, we've got a really big company that we're gonna get onto that uh, has basically sold their entire position in, in Bitcoin. And look, they made a really good profit, so you can't blame them for it, each to their own but time will tell whether it was the right decision or not. Again, Dogecoin, I'm not so sure about Dogecoin, but again, look, I'm happy if Dogecoin survives and lives and does really well. If that's what the people want, the people should make the decision. And really at the moment, the people have decided that Dogecoin is legit. So, 
you know fair enough bitcoin again i believe in and you know that would be uh, a, a wise decision in my mind but i just don't know if people are ever going to spend bitcoin on a day-to-day -day basis like that it's a store of wealth that's where people want to have their money safeguarded i don't know if they're going to use it in daily transactions like that you know maybe one day and again i know you know el salvador uh and places uh in Africa and things like that are using Bitcoin on a day-to-day -day basis kind of thing but yeah again I think the store of wealth is uh, where Bitcoin's value lies but time will tell now here's the story I was talking about so we've got large companies currently selling Bitcoin and this could continue and this is what may push the price down even lower so rougher investment has cashed out its Bitcoin investment and has netted over $1 billion in less than half a year. So in six months, they made $1 billion. Approximately five months after allocating 2.5% of its portfolio in Bitcoin, Ruffer Investment has sold its entire position uh, at a profit of $1 billion. The firm cited the declining interest from younger generations as the primary reason for the sale. Look, we were just literally looking at this and, you know, two fifths of, you know, younger generations, i.e. millennials, would rather buy that over crypto. It's just at the moment because it's gone a bit quiet that it's not seeming so interesting. Now that it's not making as much money and obviously that it's, you know, lost, you know, almost 50% of its total value, the weak hands will get shaken out and rougher investment, you know, it's still a good decision. They made a billion dollars. You can't knock them on that. But is it the best long-term decision? Sorry, long-term decision. I'm not sure. You know, selling maybe half of it might have been a good idea. But again, look, maybe selling all of it was a really good idea because maybe Bitcoin now goes back down to twenty thousand, eleven thousand dollars. Who who knows? And they buy buy back in at even cheaper prices again with all of this. Time will tell whether they made the right decision or not. But time in the market generally outweighs trying to time the market for the general investor. You know, these guys are considered probably kind of smart money, you know, big investors. Maybe they could see the writing on the wall that things are going to go much lower and they'll buy back in later. Maybe. We'll see. All right. Last but not least, though. So crypto analytics firm Santament or Santament is tracking Bitcoin whale behavior following the sell-off that drove the price of BTC to around $30,000 last month. I'm, I'm fairly confident we're going to come back and test 30000 at least thereabouts. It might just be wicks, but I think there's going to be wild swings to the up and downside. Now, Santanamon unveils that large crypto hodlers are buying BTC even as the digital asset fails to reclaim the $40,000 level. The firm says that Bitcoin whales recently bought tens of thousands of Bitcoin worth nearly $2 billion. So was $2 billion, you know, some of this, uh, you know, Bitcoin that got sold over here because they made a profit of over a billion dollars on this. I'd say that's some of it. All right. So again, this is where we're at. We have broken to the downside. And again, we can already see a little bit of green there. That doesn't mean anything, though. Like this is this day is only three minutes old so there you go so for me this is what i think we could see at the moment again we started here came down to here up to there and this is what we're going to see and then we could see this and then a really big swing to the downside a really big swing to the upside come back down in here and do this kind of stuff before getting back up into here this is absolutely what i could see happening Am I saying that is what's going to happen? No, I really don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see. But I think there's going to be a lot of uh, seesawing and choppy action before Bitcoin makes its next uh, sort of decision. And, you know, whether this plays out exactly like the typical Wyckoff pattern would play is what we have to see. Because usually the Wyckoff has a sell-off, a bit of volatility, and then, you know, one more leg sort of down to the downside. And I'm not saying it's coming down to 12,000. It could. Maybe the downside is only here at 18,000, you know, 20,000. We come back and retest the old highs. Maybe it only comes down to here around about 24,000. No one truly knows, but that's what we're waiting for. All right, look, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. It's pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment unless you're in Theta Fuel or r -Weave, then you've uh, outdone the market and congratulations to you and I'll see you next time.